Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to another episode. Today we have for you an amazing guest and interesting topic. Our guest today is Cordelia Gaffar, award-winning author, speaker, and brilliant coach. And our topic is resentment, a natural emotion that often comes when you feel treated unfairly. I'm looking forward to today's episode and it's absolute pleasure to have Sister Cordelia as a guest, and I'm also looking forward to learning and hearing Cordelia's thoughts about resentment and how we can use that emotion to serve us instead of holding us back. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the show. Wa alaikum salam rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam rahmatullah. Thank you, Adam. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure. So before we get into our topic, I would like you to tell us a bit more about yourself. Tell us what you do, who you are, and what you do. Absolutely. So, you know, I actually didn't ever intend on becoming a coach. Um, <laughs> in my previous life, in my previous career, I actually uh, was a, an accountant and I worked in corporate America. And when I left, I was actually reporting directly to the CEO of a IT startup um, because I handled all the finances. So um, I was called like the financial controller. I was the only woman mm. in the business. And so uh, aside from dealing with the finances, I did um, a few, I experienced a little bit of resentment (laughs) because, you know, I felt like I was being kind of taken advantage of a bit in that position. But ultimately, that's not why I left. Um, I left because, uh, you know, we were raising a, a small family at that time and my two old or my two children then were four and two and I learned that we were expecting our third so I just thought you know kids are only kids once (laughs) so I want to be with them Mm. and that's ultimately where my decision came from but uh, over the years what I ultimately decided was to homeschool them and in that journey and watching them grow I noticed that you know, when they're reaching that age of around five, they start going from having temper tantrums to trying to express what they're feeling. And for some kids, and for some kids, it blocks the way they um, learn. And so that's when I started studying emotional intelligence in relation to the way we process information and communicate with others. And uh, eventually I started a blog, fast forward to five kids later, (laughs) and um, that blog became a book, which I published in 2015. And when I uh, published the book, it was called The Guide, How to Get Started with Workout Around My Day. I wanted women to use this, right, so that they could, you know, actually find that they can't they can, you know, ha- have time to take care of themselves physically, mentally, emotionally, right? All the excuses we have, I can't, I won't, my husband doesn't let me, you know, all whatever those things, whatever that inner dialogue is. Yeah. And in those workshops, one jobs, one day a woman asked me, do you coach? And I said, yes. <laughs> and so that's, that's the backstory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want to, I want to stay on, on the book that you mentioned, you, when, you, when you wrote that book, what kind of feedback you got and were you surprised? You know what? Um, I was surprised. Some feedback I got was, because I didn't address calories, I didn't address BMI and stuff like that. So people were like, well, what about calorie counting? What about, you know? And I was like, oh, like, I didn't really know that was something that people actually care about. So I, I wrote the book again. Well, I did a second edition and it's just called Workout Around My Day, the only health guide that moms need. And in there, I have a chapter called About the Numbers. Yeah. So basically, you know, my short story on that 
is don't, don't worry about the calories. Yeah, don't worry about the numbers. The, the cal- okay. you know, the number on the scale, the BMI, none of that really matters. Mm. Um, because at the end of the day, the way we're processing the the way we feel and our emotions, that's going to affect your your density, your overall body density. But that's like a whole different conversation. Mm. So. <laughs> uh, okay, but that's really interesting. You were featured in a book called America's Leading Ladies. Can you talk more yeah. about that? This is another result of me just saying yes. So <laughs> about, <laughs> about a year ago, I'm uh, driving my kids to soccer practice and I get this phone call and she's like, you know, I'm making this book. America's leading ladies and I want a a representation of all the women in America Mm. and I don't have a Muslim woman. Okay. Um, So she says, uh, before you say no, some of your co-authors are Oprah Winfrey and Melinda Gates. And I said, are you serious right now? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's really amazing. Congratulations. And uh, that's really like uh, to even for our Muslim youth to see someone featured in a book like that is you are you are actually a role model to many. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. My intention today is to talk to you about how can we use resentment to serve us. And before you answer to that question, would you like to walk us through the process? How do we actually form resentments? to understand a bit more about it. Yes, absolutely. That's, that's a good idea. So what happens is, you know, over a period of time, we, time, we will, you know, have, let's say, you know, like in our marriages, for example, right? And we'll accept something from our spouse. You know, this is male or female. And you just think, oh, you know, that's not a big deal. But in your heart, you're feeling, why didn't he or she think about the way I feel, right? Mm. But you kind of dismiss it and you don't ever talk about it. And then it happens again. And then, you know, there you form this pattern of behavior and the other person is learning that pattern of behavior and you're getting in, you're, you're getting buried underneath uh, not expressing yourself, right? Yeah. So one of two things will happen. Either you'll you know, eventually (laughs) express yourself badly, like you'll yell and scream, right? Or if you've, or if you've been taught when you were younger that it's not appropriate to be, you know, to express yourself in that way, you'll just keep it inside and then it'll lodge yourself in the energy centers of our body. And usually that's our joints. So then we'll have like joint pain or lower back pain and those kind of things wow. so there there's a physical there's an, a, men, a mental uh response or you know you know there's an emotional response but there are um there are consequences for you you know for your overall health so now getting to transforming the resentment right let's say you get to a point where you just can't take it anymore and one day you decide you're going to speak up so it may look like something like, um, let's say this is a work situation, like I told you before when I worked in corporate, right? And so one day you just financial controller, I'm not the director of HR and I don't wanna do these things. Mm. What we need to do is look for someone to support that role and those things. And for the first time now, right, your boss is gonna see, oh, I thought you enjoyed that, right? I didn't realize that you didn't appreciate doing those tasks. And it starts a new conversation. And even it could be compensation, right? It could be like, oh, well, why don't you find someone to take over those things and, you know, or, you know, first outline what it is that you've been doing that we haven't been paying you for. And then we'll find someone to fill that role. Right. And then this is a way that you would transform your resentment for being, quote unquote, taken advantage of into profit, because now they see, wow, 
you were actually doing the job, you were actually doing the job of a whole different person. <laughs> mm. So, um, by speaking up, just by speaking up. Yeah. Wow, that's that's interesting, and we don't pay too much attention to it, but it actually resentment affects us physically and mentally, as you said. It really does, and it changes the dialogue because I, I will have to say, if I'm if I were to go back to that time, I, I did have a lot of back pain. I had a lot of shoulder pain. Shoulder pain is usually, I now know this, I didn't know this then, but I, that's a sign that you're taking on other people's burdens. And it's like a, an actual physical burden. And that's, you know, it's, it's interesting that it lands on your shoulders. Yeah. Never heard this before, but it actually makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people don't realize it. And when I do workshops and, you know, I, is, I'll say, let's feel into our bodies and see where there's some resistance, mm. right? Or uh, pain, or you, you just feel like you can't move anymore. And I just have them like wiggle their shoulders, shake their legs, wiggle their hips. And these are the places where resentment reside. So if you have financial uh, disagreements or troubles, right? Mm. You're going to have like lower back or hip pain sometimes. If you have uh, relationship struggles um, where you really uh, are struggling with either feeling like you're being taken advantage of or you wish or, or you, you feel like you're due more, it'll be your knees, sometimes your ankles. <laughs> yeah. I, I, would, I would have guessed relationship problems to affect the heart, some people say you know the statement heart broke but that's interesting you can feel the in your knees <laughs> yeah because yeah. remember you also fall to your knees right mm. Mm. Yeah. how do people feel after this exercise when you do this kind kind of exercises what is their response so most often you know you're going to find this pretty interesting so uh most women right um will they usually feel it like in their stomach and their lower back and hips sometimes they'll feel it in their shoulders but the stomach is where our passion and our anger is okay right <laughs> so um um and that's also where fear is right so then you know if we you know if i then tell them okay what happened today that you think that you would be having, you know, I'll tell them, okay, so that you think that you would be having, you know, I'll tell them, okay, so if you have stomach pain, you know, this is the center for anger, fear, passion. What happened today? Mm -hmm. Oh, I had a fight, you know, or, oh, you know, I was in a situation where I was really scared, right? Mm -hmm. And then we talk through it. And then I uh, show them how to release it. Wow. What is the biggest lesson you have learned from your work? That, um, you know, our bodies are really amazing vehicles to experience this life. And there's, there's so much wisdom in them as long as we listen to them and we treat them well, you know, like, you may under, you may not see the correlation between <laughs> nutrition and what I'm talking about right now, but you know, when, right. Um, I'll give you an example. This will make it clearer. So one of the workshops I did, this woman was having, uh, she's really angry. She was having some difficulty in her marriage and what she would do is stay up at night and eat. Hmm. Okay. But when I showed her how to do the, the release and uh, bring in the self-compassion and self-forgiveness, then she felt butterflies in her stomach and no desire to eat, mm. right? So what, what that means is we adopt dismissive or you know, really abusive behaviors for our bodies to avoid processing and feeling our emotions, right? So she was eating late at night. So she's not resting her body. The late at night is when your body actually detoxifies and mm -hmm. she's adding more to the pile. 
right? But now she's piled, right? But now she's learned that instead of adding more to the pile, allow her body to free itself of toxins at night, right? Yeah. And also at the same time, free her mind of these thoughts that are causing her to stay up and eat. And how do you do that? How do you free your mind from thoughts? Freeing your mind from thoughts, again, um, that's a that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> But, you know, just the, the short version of it. You know what I'll tell you to do? Yeah. So I have a, three, a free three-part training yeah. uh, for my Replenish Me program. And if you go to www.replenishme.info, the mm. first step, We'll answer that question. It's all about release and how to free your mind. So that's the short answer. Um, awesome. <laughs> Definitely check it out. Yeah. And uh, and uh, for also the listeners, can you one more time repeat the name of the site? Sure, sure. It's www.replenishme.info. I-N-F-O. Thank you. In light of your work, what is the change that you want to see in the world? Yeah, in light of my work, you know, I would like, I would like us to, instead of teaching our children to numb themselves and not address the way they feel, instead I want us to teach them to allow them to understand what they're feeling, right? so that they can process it and communicate effectively so that they, uh, they feel safe, they feel secure, and, um, and they're in the habit of, uh, of getting what they truly desire, right? So um, this, is, this is something I feel that we rob them of. And most of us, a lot of the adults I work with, they have stopped emotionally maturing like probably at age 10. Mm. And so we're, we're all these adults walking around, but we're children inside, like truly children. Mm. Well, so do I hear that we adults as well, we need to embrace the child within us and teach our children to identify and learn how to express their emotion? Yeah. Yes, and I, I agree. That's exactly what I'm saying because that's that's the the beauty of parenting. You know, I have six beautiful children, mashallah, and I've, mashallah. each one has taught me something just amazing, mashallah. And I've, mashallah. each one has taught me something just amazing about myself, about human beings, and about you know the way that Allah created us. And um, when we allow um, ourselves to relate to our children like oh subhanallah you know you have this personality trait that's me <laughs> and and say i didn't really know that about myself let's see where did that come from you know and then instead of looking at that kid and shaming them for that it's like you're acting like me how horrible you little person <laughs> don't mirror me you know yeah. it's just like ah. Oh, You're like me. Okay, what's that about? All right, let's see. Let's, you know, see where we can, we'll go through this together, you know, inshallah. And then um, I think <laughs> it'll be better for us and better for the kids and better for the world because you know what I mean? We're yeah. damaging. Yeah. Wow. So that's really interesting to look at our children and see what lesson can they teach us about us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I ask every guest to leave us with book recommendation, but uh, would you like to leave us with two recommendation, which one of is your book and tell us how can we get access to your book and another book that you absolutely will, would give to someone. Mm, okay. So let's see. Any one of my books, all of my books are on my website, which is my name, uh, CordeliaGafar.com. And so it has the books I've discussed so far. Um, and I guess there's one other book, Ramadan Hacks, Ramadan Food Hacks. And that really gets into, you know, food and 
eating patterns, but above and beyond that, beyond that, I would say, um, you know, like if you really want to understand the way emotions work in the body, there's, um, I'm trying to decide which one I prefer. I would probably say um, Molecules of Emotion by Can Dr. Candice Pert, Molecules of Emotions. And uh, it's a much longer title than that. Yeah, so it, um, she basically, you know, subhanAllah, in that book, she actually talks about something that I read in a book, the book of healing by Dr. Ahmed Sakar, where he talks about the physiology of prayer and she talks about the front, frontal cortex and how um, the body is designed for bliss or humans are designed for bliss. But we don't allow ourselves. Yeah, we don't allow ourselves. We don't allow ourselves. But uh, Dr. Ahmad Dakar in his book of healing, he also talks about that on the chapter where he talks about the physiology of prayer and the necessity to go into sujood every day, you know, at the certain points of day when we do. Yeah. So, yeah. Subhanallah. That's interesting. Well, thank you for those book recommendations. I will check them up. And we are coming to end to our conversation. Is, is there any final words that you would like to say? The only final thing I want to share is that, you know, um, we are creators of elevated opportunity. Wow. We're our own CEO. Yeah. And uh, just take, take the opportunity to do that today. That's profound. Good way to end Shazakallah khair. I really enjoyed learning from you. Talk absolute pleasure. May Allah bless you and bless the work you do. Amen. Thank you so much, Wayakam. Thank you for having me on the show. <laughs>